Hello, it's Yelena here from Yelly's Belly, and today I'm going to teach you how to do a veggie stir fry. For today's example, I am going to use onions, peppers, and mushrooms, but really this does apply to any sort of veggie stir fry that you'd like to do, whether it's with some broccoli, carrots, cauliflower, asparagus, uh, you, it's really about the same method. Now, this may seem like a very easy task, but uh, a couple of my students actually don't really know how to do a veggie stir fry. So if I give you give them a recipe and it says stir fry the onions, peppers, and garlic and mushroom, and I don't really give uh, more specific steps, the uh, result doesn't really turn out exactly how we intend it to be. So that's why I'm creating this video here and let's get right into it. So I've got my yellow pepper onion and mushrooms these are organic mushrooms i do get this um whole thing from costco it's bigger than my face pretty good size for like five dollars so um one thing i want to mention depending on the size of the pan i would recommend to either saute all of the veggies together or saute them separately so let's say you don't have this big pan and you've only got either this one or this one, whoops, <laughs> either this one or this one, you've got both. I would recommend doing them separately. So I would recommend the onions and the peppers in the smaller one uh, and the mushrooms in the bigger one. Now, the reason I wouldn't recommend doing everything in this one or uh, same in this one is because it just, it won't cook it just it won't cook the same as if you would do it separately you want there to be enough room for all of the vegetables to to touch the bottom of the pan so if you add too much there's going to be no more room for it to spread out and it's going to be on top of each other instead of every side and every vegetable uh touching the pan uh really a pepper is a fruit but we're going to cook uh, call it a veggie stir fry today. So because I do have this big one, I am going to just use the big one and I'll, for example, saute the onions and the peppers on the left side and I'll add the mushrooms to the right side. Uh, but for the purpose of this video and so I can really explain in detail exactly what to do, I will just saute the peppers and the onions on one pan and the mushrooms on its own here, and then we'll mix them together. So you want to start off by washing the mushrooms. I like to put it on warm water and you know, they, they might feel slimy, but you want to get all the dirt off of it. Mushrooms are very dirty. They do come from the ground. Also, I've already got my cutting board here. So as soon as I get off from the water, I transfer them into the cutting board, which is what I'm going to use next. No need to get a bowl and dirty a bunch of bowls. So I do like two at a time, and you kind of just rub them with your fingers like this. Sometimes you'll have to scratch some. You get the idea. At this point, I have not turned on the heat on any of the pans yet, but I'm going to go ahead and start chopping the mushrooms now. Depending on the mushroom, you'll cut off a piece of the stem, like this one. Others, you don't need to. This one's dirty and pretty long, so I'll cut them off. If they're short and just don't look too dirty, I'll leave them on. And cut the, I like to cut the mushrooms in slices, but really there's no right, right or wrong way to do so here. You can cut them in a cross-like way as well, and they'll be a little bit chunkier. After you're done chopping, then you can go ahead and add it to the pan and spread them out evenly. Depending if your pan is nonstick or not, you will add oil. Uh, if you do add oil, try to use a spray oil. Uh, the less oil you use, the better it is. And if you don't want to use oil either, you can add a little bit of water like I do. Next, we are ready to chop our pepper. 
I like to slice one or two pieces off before slicing the middle so I have enough room to get the knife in there and cut it off as shown. Uh, you'll notice I forgot to remove the sticker, but definitely go ahead and do that and remove any seeds and little white areas. It's not necessary to remove all of it, but just get what you can. I like to cut it in slices like fries and after I cut into slices, then I put them in horizontal and chop them into smaller pieces. Depending on the recipe you are trying to create, uh, doesn't matter what shape, size, or form you chop it into. This is really up to your preference. Next, we'll be ready to chop our onion. I am using a yellow onion and first chop off the ends. After that, set those aside and just cut the onion right down the middle. After cutting, the outside skin should be fairly easy to remove. And once again, the way you chop this is completely up to you. Depending on the recipe, sometimes I leave it into longer rings, other times I chop them into smaller pieces as shown. Be sure to turn on the mushrooms and onions and peppers to about seven medium high on the stove top. And if you have leftovers, place them in a seal tight Ziploc bag for use later. Adding some water to the peppers and onions to avoid sticking or burning. Once the pot gets a little bit hotter, I am going to go ahead and add the seasoning. So in this case, I added some black pepper and paprika. If you'd like, you can add any seasonings you'd want. I like to keep it simple. My staples are mainly black pepper and paprika. Sometimes I'll add onion powder or garlic powder, but I'm using onions here, so there's no need to add more onion flavor. But because for this recipe, I am going to be mixing a ton of veggies and some noodles together, I'm not going to add any garlic uh, seasoning either. You'll see here now the mushrooms have released a little bit of water and that's completely normal. Just give it a stir so everything is evenly cooked and at this point I will be turning the heat up a little higher and I'm going to be adding in the seasonings as well, which I'll keep it the same, black pepper and paprika. Later on, we will be adding some liquid aminos. Then go ahead and give it a nice stir to evenly incorporate the seasonings. And at this point, we are going to cover the mushrooms one more time so the flavor really goes into it. As you notice there, I turned the heat up higher, cover it back there. And now we're going to give our peppers and our onions a stir. Now this is fairly around three to four minutes after we were pre previously checked on the onions and peppers. Now, if you see the peppers and onions sticking a little to the pan, no worries, just add a little bit of water and then give it a stir and you'll see the little burnt areas just come right off. So now officially going to remove the top of the mushrooms they look fairly cooked and there's enough water there. Don't worry, do not throw the water out. That will evaporate and if throwing it out will remove a lot of the flavor from the mushrooms. So we'll just leave it like that on like almost near to high on heat and just let it cook and crisp up. 
As you see here, the onions and peppers look pretty good. So I am going to go ahead and turn this off the heat, add a little bit of more water and just let it sit there. Now that most of the water from the mushrooms has evaporated, we are going to go ahead and turn the heat a little bit lower and give it a stir. And there's still a little bit of water, so you don't need to add more to remove those burnt areas off the pan. If you missed it, rewind and look at it again and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Not gonna turn the heat off. There's still some water to evaporate. Just give it a quick stir and let it continue to cook on. If you like your mushrooms a little extra cooked like I do, turn up the heat onto high and let it cook. Otherwise, just leave it on seven to eight. Peppers and onions are looking good. Not gonna add any more water here, although you see those burnt areas. The pan is now, the stove is now off, so there's no need. And if you look closely to the mushrooms, you can see the edges are a little brown as shown. That is when you know those are ready to go. And I went ahead and mixed them together just because of purposes for my recipe, but feel free to do as you please. And that's how you do a veggie stir fry. Once again, you can do this by with adding any other sorts of veggies. I actually ended up adding some broccoli and carrots and edamame beans to the onions, peppers, and mushrooms. So, um, if you like it a little bit extra like crispy burnt like I do then as you saw towards the end I put it on high and I let it sit there for about uh, maybe 50 seconds and Let it get that brown color if you don't then don't let the water fully evaporate always make sure it's a little wet in there and um, That way it won't brown up. It'll be cooked, but it'll kind of be more of just like steamed but personally I think the veggies have a lot more flavor when you let it cook up a little bit extra. And yeah, I don't really use salt. I just use the black pepper, paprika, maybe onion or garlic powder, depending if I'm adding onions or garlic or not. But the main key ingredient that I love to use for uh, stir fries for veggies are liquid aminos or even coconut aminos. But do know coconut aminos is on the lighter side and liquid aminos is on the saltier side. This is what the liquid aminos looks like. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to follow my Instagram at Yelly's Badly. I'll leave a link in the description for more easy vegan recipes.